Young Turks is at uh, the DLD Startup Festival here in Tel Aviv and we've been bringing you stories of interesting high-tech startups but now we're going to bring you the story of a food startup. It's not even food tech, it's just food. So come follow me, let's see what they are up to. So, uh, I have with me uh, the founder of Harkol. It's uh, a startup here in Tel Aviv that works with food. And, and agriculture. And agriculture. agriculture. But I'm going to let him explain to us what kind of food they work with. And then I'm going to request Balbi, who's on camera here, to tell us, uh, what, show us the kind of food it is. Harkol Food Tech is the world's first commercial grasshopper farm. Grasshoppers are the most efficient protein source nature can provide and at Hagol Food Tech we develop methods and technologies to grow grasshoppers on commercial scale. Okay, grow grasshoppers on commercial scale? Yes. Uh, sounds a little scary or not? Um, well, uh, to start with, yes, it's, it looks scary because that's the concept, that's the way we look at insects, but once you get used to them, but they're pretty nice. You're not scared of them anymore. Okay. You can pet them if you want. Okay. They're not... All right. She's not alive anymore. That's a she. Ah, okay. <laughs> All right. So tell us where this idea came from. Why do you think it's important that as a protein source, we need to move away from certain traditional protein sources yes. to things like this? The thing is this. Um, the demand for protein globally is expected to double and existing protein sources have their own set of limitations. Um, Animal-based protein is harmful to the environment and plant-based protein requires heavy processing in, and not that healthy. So as an entrepreneur, I was looking for alternatives that will provide a better solution. Now, there are a few uh, alternatives of protein, but they have their own set of problems. For example, algae suffer from very, from very distinct taste and cultured meat is years away from becoming commercially viable. And insects have been attracting a lot of attention. Right. And in, in particular, grasshoppers provide the best solution. With their tendency to swarm, they, uh, we can grow them on, a, on a intensive agriculture. And with their superior nutritional content, they are a healthier solution. And of course, they are more sustainable about 20 times more efficient than beef. Alright, uh, so uh, grasshoppers and other insects actually have been native to uh, consumption in a lot of markets in Southeast Asia, parts of India as well, and then of course uh, South America. And Africa. Uh, right. And Africa. Yes, and the Middle East. And the Middle East. Actually, it's not that much of a departure from the food that a lot of, like millions of people or billions of people around the world already eat. Absolutely. The thing is that about two and a half billion people consume insects today. Most of them consume grasshopper, that is the most widely eaten insect. However, the supply comes from collection in the wild, meaning the supply is limited by seasons. With the innovation of Hargol, we grow them all year round. So we can provide them for a safer and controlled uh, source, meaning it is healthier and it's not a risk to the, uh, to the population that consume them. Alright, so now let's talk about uh, the innovation at Hardwood, right? So how are you going about creating uh, a space to artificially uh, cultivate or grow grasshoppers? Why does it work? Talk us through the technology that you're using, if at all. Well, I'll talk about three major innovations we have. First one is uh, the ability to grow them year-round. We develop a special climate control environment and we can grow grasshoppers all year round anywhere on earth. Second innovation is the incubation period of the eggs. In the wild it takes 40 weeks for the eggs to hatch. In our incubator it takes two weeks, meaning we increase the number of life cycles from one per year to ten. And the last part of the innovation is the cage that we develop for vertical farming. It enables us to grow ten times more biomass per square foot while maintaining ventilated and well sanitized environment for the grasshoppers. With our innovation, grasshopper farming became efficient and scalable. Alright, so uh, can you tell us how big the market is for you in Israel and uh, what are the markets outside Israel that you're looking to more tap into immediately? And is India one of them? Israel is not the market that we are targeting. We are targeting the USA market. About five years ago, the USA insect protein market was zero. Today it is about $100 million. 
five years' time, it is, it is expected to reach one billion dollars, and the supply is not there. We are best uh, positioned to fulfill that demand. Beyond that, we are looking at Asian markets, African markets, and European markets to provide a grasp of this as well. Okay. So it's going to be some time before it comes to India, but I don't need to wait. I can taste some right now. So yes. you want to kind of let's look over that? Yes, let's go. Let's go. Take a few minutes to eat. it. All right. Okay, let's talk with the little one here. That's again, do, you, do you like grasshopper? He doesn't know English, but he can tell you one thing. Okay. What do you want to say? Yami? Okay, he's just being shy, but earlier, in the day when I came by, he was popping them in his mouth like candy. So we know he likes them. Yami? 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 Okay, what I'm doing here, uh, to serve them as a whole, I'm removing legs and wings. And once the pan will be hot enough, we will fry them in oil and uh, season them with a little salt. That's about it. It's quick. Let's make sure it's hot enough. Yes, it's hot. I think we can fry them. Oh, it's not hot enough. But, okay, it will be fine. We just still fry them for a few minutes. And when it's done, you'll be able to taste the grasshopper. Will it be your first? Um, yes, it will be my first. Good. Good for you and good for the grasshopper. Okay, so uh, I also want to ask you, so what, in what form um, do you presently export these? Is it as a whole or do you uh, cook and then package and uh, sell them? I'm just trying to understand uh, how this might work and what might be some of the regulations that might come in with. Well, uh, according to the regulation, it doesn't matter if you uh, ship them frozen, fried, or even uh, milk to powder. No, no uh, significant difference. What we do with them, uh, we milk, we, we dry them, and we mill them into powder and ship it as an ingredient for the food industry in the USA. Okay. You see, it takes a very nice color, red color, like lobster. I can tell you that all the big guys from the food industry are looking into this new arena of insect eroding. Uh, the CEO of Pep PepsiCo announced that they are researching uh, with insect eroding and they already announced that they uh, even produced waffles uh, with uh, mealworms growing. So all the big guys are looking at it and the potential is easier. Okay. Uh, it's actually drawn um, a really good ready. color, and uh, so now we're gonna we are now gonna plate them. Okay, so this is my uh, moment as uh, a food anchor of sorts. So you can actually see that uh, it has a nice color. It's all red. It actually smells really, really good. Um, I think it's you know it has that smell of when you uh, perhaps fry uh, some sort of fish. Um, well, the, the taste of the grasshoppers is different uh, between species. I can tell you that some species taste like chips, others like chicken, and some even taste like shrimps. Okay. Very nice taste. Okay. Let's add a, a little bit of salt. And then I think before you try one, my son will try, will try one and will tell you how it tastes like. Why it tastes like? It's a little bit hot. Okay. Take one. Come, we'll, we'll bite into this together. Okay. It's really good. It's really good? First time eating grasshopper and it's really, really good. I think I'm going to take a packet of these back home if it's possible. 
And if you want to try some, you can come by to the CNBC office in Noida. That's where I sit out of. And I'm happy to share some with you. So, on that note, we're going to close this live. Thanks a lot for joining us. And uh, one last look at the little one here, taking a bite. Take one and tell them what you think. Unlike spray, even if, uh, unlike spray, even if, uh, Finish?